and you told me if I violate your rights, I'm going to be, I don't know, in trouble, I guess. I'm a vet as myself. I understand what you're doing. That's fine. Mm -hmm. They don't want you. Welcome to us, corrupt cops. In our latest video, we expose a these clueless corrupt cops will cost their city thousands. Please subscribe, like, and share to spread the anti-corruption message. Together, we can stand up and make a difference. Join us to support and fight for justice. On January 30th, 2023, civil rights advocate Jeff Gray, a YouTuber, found himself stationed defiantly before Ocean Springs City Hall in Mississippi. His placard, boldly proclaiming God bless the homeless vets, served as a visible testament to his cause. Officer Wilder from the Ocean Springs Police Department sauntered up to Gray, who was on a mission to scrutinize the responsiveness of various cities along the Mississippi Gulf Coast to the exercise of his First Amendment rights. The ensuing interaction, meticulously documented, later found its way onto Gray's YouTube channel. Good morning, sir. God bless homeless veterans. Uh huh? God bless our homeless veterans. Okay, so what are we doing? God bless the homeless veterans. I heard you the first time. Why don't you answer my question? What are you doing? God bless the homeless veterans. All right, you need to go somewhere else. Why is that? Because you can't solicit here on the front of the property. God bless the homeless veterans. God bless them too. Have a nice day. I'm a veteran myself. I move. God bless the homeless veterans. ID, please. For what? Did I just tell you to move? Why are you telling me to move? Because you can't be here. Why? Because I said. Just because you said? Yeah, you're on city property. Yeah, I am. Are you soliciting money? God bless the homeless veterans. Again, what are you doing? God bless the homeless veterans. God. I Hello. can read. Shh, shh, shh. Listen to me. You're fixing to piss me off. I don't give a damn if I piss you off or not. Really? God? Is pissing you off have any kind of relevance on whether I'm what I'm doing? Yeah, you can't be here. Chill it out. No, I'm not chilling De -escalate it out. De-escalate and calm nope. down. No. Nope. I already back told you what little, you need to do. Back off a little before you make a big mistake. Big mistake, really? Yeah. No. Let me you're making a mistake. You're so. asking me what I'm doing. I've yep. told you how many times. You didn't tell me. God bless. I can read the homeless veterans. Now, do you understand what I'm doing? Oh, you want to play that game, really? I am standing no, on a public sidewalk. Doing. You didn't tell me what the you're city doing. hall. You keep telling me what's on your sign. You God tell me what you're doing. bless the homeless veterans. What do you not get about that? What well, are you not getting understand me for you telling you to leave? You can't tell me to leave. I can tell you to leave. I'm engaged in constitutional protected activity, sir. Officer Wilder asserts that Mr. Gray cannot linger in front of City Hall and must vacate the premises. Mr. Gray in turn contends that he is exercising his constitutionally protected rights. While the First Amendment safeguards freedom of speech, engaging in such speech does not automatically confer an absolute right to linger at a government building as elucidated by the Supreme Court in the 1965 Cox v. Louisiana case. The court highlighted that while free speech and assembly are fundamental in a democratic society, they don't grant unrestricted access to any public place for expressing opinions. Moreover, the 1981 United States Postal Service v. Council of Greenberg Civic Association's case emphasized that government ownership or control of a property does not guarantee First Amendment access. Although individuals may be removed from government property despite engaging in speech, a court might find Mr. Gray's removal from the vicinity of Town Hall a potential violation of the First Amendment. The Supreme Court's precedent in Perry Education Association v. Perry Local Educators Association categorizes government property into traditional public forums, limited or designated public forums, and non-public forums. City Hall's surroundings could be deemed a traditional public forum, especially if there is no historical evidence of restrictions. Officer Wilder's insinuation that Mr. Gray couldn't express himself at any time or in any manner at that location raises concerns. If a court determines City Hall's area as a traditional public forum, 
Ocean Springs would likely be unable to entirely restrict Mr. Gray's First Amendment activities. If the city justifies Mr. Gray's removal based on the content of his speech, it must prove a compelling state interest and demonstrate that any restrictions on time, manner, and place are narrowly tailored, leaving ample alternative channels for expression in line with the legal standards outlined in the Perry case. Look, really? you've got one of two choices. Oh, I do. So you, you tell me I have officer, I have, have one of two choices. You okay. can respect my civil rights or you can violate my civil rights. Which one's it going to be? I'm standing here with this sign and I'm going to stand here. God put it in my heart. I'm not going anywhere. And you're not getting my ID. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start recording. I'm going to get my phone out right here, okay? See this? Yeah. I'm recording right now, too. Can people get body cams from the city? So All right. Too, right. Yeah. All right, so I'm what's it going to be? Well. You've got one of two choices. So you're telling me what I have to do. You're, you've got one of two choices. Okay. You can respect my constitutional rights. Well, let me go rights. tell you this. Uh -huh. I'm going to go tell the mayor, and when the mayor comes out here to tell you to leave and you refuse, then I'm going to arrest you. All right, if I refuse. Okay. Yes, if you refuse. Even though I'm engaged in constitutional rights. It doesn't matter. Action, it doesn't matter. No, it I'm does standing not. on a public sidewalk in front of the city Because you're allowed hall. to move. I you're can, allowed to leave. I'm going to stay You're here. being told. I'm going to stay. If the mayor comes out and tells me to leave, uh, under threat of arrest, I'll leave. You're right back. This is a constitutionally protected activity. I can't believe this. All right, well, I just got off the phone. Yes, sir. Making a phone call. And yes, the thing sir. is, you're actually on government property. Right, okay. I'm on city hall property. Yes, we have the right, the city hall, and me as being part of the city, can ask you to leave the property. We have that right. We own this thing. city owns it, All right? So as a city employee, it's myself, people that work in there has asked you to leave and you refuse. Okay, if okay. you want me to leave, and I'll leave. And you refuse. Let me let me explain myself before you go any further. Okay. Because you're very confrontational. You want to tell me what I can and can't do. And you told me if I violate your rights, I'm going to be, I don't know, in trouble, I guess. I'm a vet as myself. All right. I understand what you're doing. That's fine. Mm -hmm. They don't want you here on city property. Now, if you walked off the property, you went somewhere else, all right, not on private property, and did this, it wouldn't be a problem. You understand that? Do you understand that? I'm engaged in constitutionally Do you understand protected. That? I'm engaged yes in, or no? It's a very simple I'm question. I'm engaged in constitutionally me? protected activity. So, so let me explain this, this to you again. This is freedom of speech and freedom of religion. I don't care. If you want, let me explain this again. If they're trespassing me, Let me explain me, this again. You're trespassed. Okay, I'll leave. Now you're done. Officer Wilder initially warns Mr. Gray that he'll need the mayor's intervention to kick him out, threatening arrest if compliance is not met. However, he makes a solo comeback, omitting the mayor's presence, and slaps Mr. Gray with a trespass notice under Mississippi's Section 97-1797. This statute deems it a misdemeanor for anyone, sans legal authority, to linger on another's property after being explicitly forbidden by the owner, lessee, custodian, or any authorized person, verbally or in writing. Despite limited case law on the matter, the statute's lack of clarity regarding government-owned public spaces leaves room for interpretation. A court could potentially convict an individual for trespassing on Ocean Springs City property. Ambiguity surrounds Officer Wilder's standing as an authorized person with the authority to banish individuals. In the absence of a formal agreement between Ocean Springs government and the police department, Mr. Gray could argue convincingly that Officer Wilder lacked the unilateral power to declare trespass. Moreover, Section 15, 10 of the Ocean Springs Code explicitly outlaws trespassing on public property. However, this ordinance narrowly defines trespassing as entering upon posted public property after regular business hours without permission or legitimate business. Given that Mr. Gray was exercising his right to speech during regular business hours, a court is likely to conclude that he cannot be found guilty of violating this ordinance. How long? I gotta now, get. Before you go anywhere else. Yes, sir. I have a right to be here. Okay. okay let me explain the law to you again. Right, I'm, I'm I want to leave. I want your identification. Can you want my ID? Can I reach yeah, in my pocket? You can it? reach in your pocket. Okay. I'm gonna step away from you a little bit. Good. I want your ID. Can we go over there and do this? So I'm no, off the right property. Here. Okay. My ID is right here. Because I have a valid reason to be here, and I have a valid reason to ask you for identification. You don't care if I'm engaged in a constitutionally protected activity. You're a military veteran. Then go get your freaking lawyer and sue the city if you think that's a violation. I would rather not you're do not that. Then do that. Because I can't tell you what, you're not going to go anywhere with it. 
You understand me? I would rather not do that. I would rather you respect my, my constitutional protected rights, especially being a victim. I, I do well, you very much don't. every day. You're trespassing me but when you start property. becoming confrontational and telling me what I can and can't do, guess what? Is you're going to you're gonna lose every time. Is it illegal? Because I know what my job is. I know what the constitutional okay. says. I know what the God-given right is. You're not going to tell me anything different. Yeah, you understand me? You want to get confrontational? I can get confrontational. I did 20 years in the military. I collect a VA check for being disabled. I don't have a problem you holding that sign and saying that. But when you, somebody tells you you have to leave and you can't do it in front of a city building, guess what? You got to go. Just that simple. I'm not answering any more questions. Good. You told me to leave. I'm trying to leave, but you got my ID. Yeah, I got your ID. You now. told me I was trespassed. I'm leaving. Yes, you are. All right. You stopped me from leaving. When I run your information, then you're really free to go. Officer Chill, can I speak with you, sir? Yeah, it's pronounced Gil. Gil? I'm sorry. Yeah, badge number 35. All right. you? I'm good. I'm trying to explain to the officer here. I'm engaged in a constitutionally protected activity. This is freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and freedom of assembly on a traditional public forum okay. at the steps of City Hall. All I've been doing out here is politely and peacefully saying God bless the homeless veterans, people that are coming and going. I told him I'm saying God bless the homeless veterans. Mm -hmm. um, and now he's, he's trespassing me off the property. I, I don't think he can do that. I, don't, I think it's constitutionally, I think he's violating my civil rights students. So if, if somebody could please contact the mayor, the city manager, the city attorney, and let them know what's going on before you guys follow through with this trespass. He's trespassed me. I tried to leave, but he stopped me to get my, my ID. So I'm trying to comply with the trespass. The, uh, I don't know if, if he told you not. The, the way the call got reported to us was that you were out here soliciting for money, holding the sign. We don't know that until we come here and see what's going on. Well, even if I was yeah. listening, it's still a civil right. Even if I was. But I'm, I'm standing here, I told him multiple times, God bless the homeless veterans. We, we That's have, what I'm doing. He asked me, what are you city. doing? God bless the okay. homeless veterans. Oh, wait. Yes, sir, go ahead. Thank you. We have city ordinances in the city loitering, handhandling, things like that. Right? And I'm not saying you were doing any of that stuff. Well, we don't know that until we do our job and investigate, right? Yeah, well, After we read your sign, we see you're not asking for money. Right. You're just expressing your freedom of speech in a public place, right? Yes. We can't have you loitering, though. So in this city, I don't know if you're familiar with the city ordinance or not. If you, if you stay stagnant or idle in a public place, even the sidewalk, for 30 minutes or more, that's a violation of the city ordinance here. Officer Gill and a colleague approach Mr. Gray to explain a local loitering ordinance that forbids staying in one place for 30 minutes or more, especially on public property after business hours, and engaging in disruptive behavior. Mr. Gray, who was present during business hours advocating for homeless veterans, likely isn't breaking the ordinance. There's also a constitutional concern about the ordinance being vague drawing parallels to a 1978 case where the Supreme Court voided a similar vagrancy ordinance for not being clear enough. This raises issues of fair notice and the potential for random arrests. The constitutionality of loitering laws is discussed in more detail in a previous episode of ATA. Am I trespassed? Yeah, you're trespassed. Don't come back on the city property. For how long? Not for what you're doing. Uh, you got business here, you can come back and do business, but can't just stand here with a home sign. I'm leaving. Bye. If I don't leave, what'll happen? Huh? Would I be arrested if I don't leave? Yes. In a surprising turn of events, Officer Wilder returned Mr. Gray's license at City Hall, after which Mr. Gray left while officers stood guard. As he explored the Mississippi Gulf Coast, visiting Waveland, Gulfport, and Pascagoula, Mr. Gray had different encounters with the police. In Waveland, Sergeant Joff Freon stated bluntly that Mr. Gray would be arrested without question, regardless of his rights. However, in Gulfport and Pascagoula, his interactions with the police were positive. The mayor of Gulfport commended Mr. Gray for being civil, and the Gulfport police chief emphasized that his activities were protected by the First Amendment. The situation in Ocean Springs took a darker turn, with Chief Dunstan acknowledging a review of the department's actions. It's unclear if Mr. Gray plans to sue, but his past encounters with law enforcement have led to civil rights lawsuits. The Ocean Springs officers received criticism for trespassing Mr. Gray, impeding his free speech, and showing disregard for his rights. 
Officer Wilder's aggressive demeanor and admission of indifference to Gray's protected speech raised serious concerns. Officer Gill, while less hostile, was criticized for justifying Mr. Gray's removal based on a misrepresentation of loitering ordinances, which could be unconstitutional. Mr. Gray, on the other hand, was commended for maintaining a calm and professional demeanor, challenging the officers respectfully and complying with orders promptly. The article highlights Mr. Gray's consistent approach to auditing law enforcement encounters. Join and support the Us Corrupt Cops YouTube channel now. The video, These Clueless Corrupt Cops Will Cost Their City Thousands, will make you think about the importance of combating corruption within law enforcement. Subscribe, like, and share to spread this message far and wide. Let's together make a difference and ensure we have a safe and transparent community. Don't forget to stimulate community awareness by participating and supporting U.S. Corrupt Cops today.